Black Lives Matter is a modern take on the American civil rights movement. It started as a Facebook post and now spans 40 countries, attracts multi-million dollar donations and inspires black and indigenous people across the globe. Members of Black Lives Matter have been in Australia to accept the Sydney Peace Prize and they spoke to Bridget Brennan. Black Lives Matter has come to Cabramatta High School where almost all students hail from non-English speaking backgrounds. How's everybody doing? Good. We live in a country in the United States where it is okay to kill young black people and get away with it. Patrice Cullors tells these students the story of a Florida teenager. In 2012, Trayvon Martin was killed by a man named George Zimmerman. And George Zimmerman called 911 and said, there's some thug in my neighborhood. I stand before you today not knowing how I'm walking right now because my heart hurts for my son. The killing of Trayvon Martin began the hashtag and the movement Black Lives Matter. It feels like eons ago, <laughs> but it's only been a short time. Four years is nothing. It's just a blip in history. And I think that part of what we've seen over the last four years is black people and our allies galvanizing around challenging state violence, challenging mass criminalization, challenging the high unemployment rates in our neighborhoods and our communities. <laughs> Black Lives Matter has harnessed people power all across the United States. It's been there to spread the names and faces of unarmed black men and women shot dead. This year alone, 15 black Americans have been shot and killed by police. What does progress look like, Patrice, when since Trayvon Martin's death there has been so many similar incidences where you shake your head and just you can't believe it's happening again and again? I think progress um, takes time and part of Black Lives Matter was lifting up the names and the stories of so many communities and so many families who'd been harmed by officer-involved shootings or vigilantes who'd been killed in custody. Black Lives Matter has elevated a new set of voices and it sees itself as distinct from the civil rights movements of old. We are unapologetic. Uh, we are um, out here as in our full blackness, as queer people, as trans people, as women, as black people on the margins. Uh, we are really um, challenging the idea that uh, black respectability is the way that we win our safety. I think for me, Black Lives Matter is a rallying cry. Uh, it's a motto, it's a belief system, it's, uh, it's at the core foundation of our work. And our message is both to black and non-black folks. It is our duty to win! Rodney DeVerlis was raised in the US and now lives in Toronto, where he's helping to take Black Lives Matter across borders. We have nothing to lose but our chains! <laughs> I grew up in the States, in Florida. Um, I saw my friends get arrested. I saw uh, my friends get criminalized. I saw my friends' entire futures get um, ruined and tarnished by uh, structural inequalities. And I think that for all of us who've gotten involved in this work and jumped in, it, uh, it's about life or death. It's actually about necessity. Black Lives Matter played a central role protesting against white supremacist rallies in Charlottesville in Virginia earlier this year. I was uh, talking to many of the community members in Charlottesville who had arranged the rally to challenge uh, the white nationalists and white supremacists. That Nazi just throwing into people. And I remember getting the text that uh, about someone's car running over a crowd. And then the next text, the person is not um, breathing, and the next text, the person has been declared dead. And as Rodney said earlier, this movement is about life or death. It's not hyperbolic. Patrice Cullors was despondent under Barack Obama, but under President Donald Trump's administration, she's fearful. Obama's presidency for us was both a challenge to the status quo and we were also challenging him in the status quo. 
whereas this new presidency is a, a direct affront to our movement. Um, this presidency and the people he's appointed have made it very clear that Black Lives Matter is his enemy. And so our work has been to um, not just challenge this presidency, but to also try to keep our community safe under this presidency. In Australia, Aboriginal families whose relatives have died in custody have increasingly used you know, social media to spread their grief and, and anger. In, in their Every time I go to a different country, it, it's, it's really startling to me that anti-blackness anti and anti-black violence is a global phenomenon. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of undercurrents of, uh, of similarities, mm -hmm. over-incarceration, poverty, uh, community violence, um, prison industrial complex. It's always important, for, you know, as from one activist and organizer to another, to acknowledge the work that's already been done. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we come in really as strangers, you know, um, but in deep solidarity with the people here, the indigenous people of Australia, and make it, you know, want to make it known that we see the struggle and that we are in solidarity with folks. I've seen it on social media a lot and like to see the people in real life was really amazing. Black Lives Matter will be awarded the Sydney Peace Prize for all of its members across the world. I'm grateful because we know that Black Lives Matter hasn't just resonated for people inside of the United States, but actually it's resonated for black people around the globe. It's the first time that a movement has been given the honour. I think that we're living in an era now where people are, are fed up. I think that we're living in an era where we see the power of our cameras, we see the power of our, our oral stories, we see the power of, as community, we will do the work to hold uh, law enforcement accountable.